Thank you very much. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me and a privilege to be with you today to present the first annual report of the Global Covenant uh, for Cities for Climate, also known as Mexico City Pact and the Carbon Cities Climate Registry. I always enjoy to traveling to Scandinavia. I know I will be welcomed by some of, of the friendliest people in the world. Um, I will experience some of the world's most beautiful scenery here in Norway. And uh, of course, I will not have to explain the importance of sustainability to the future of our planet. Here in Norway and across uh, the Scandinavian region, our planet changing climate is understood and accepted as a scientific fact. It is not, it is not a debate to advance a political agenda here. Instead, it is an urgent calling for world action, for nations and people to agree on a strategy and commit to targets, timetables, and the resources necessary to realize them. This is a particularly urgent for 50% of humanity that today lives in the world cities. According to the United Nations, the world's urban population is likely to raise 7% by mid-century. This process of urbanization has contributed significantly to greenhouse gas emissions. Today, cities consume as much as 80% of the world's energy and account for nearly a half of all GAGs. Traditionally, cities were located near rivers and oceans for transportation and trade purposes. This historic and geographic advantage now increases the vulnerability of cities as sea levels rise and the extreme weather events increase, increase also in frequency. Here in Europe, 70% of the largest cities have areas vulnerable to, to rising sea levels. Mexico City is located at 2,200 meters above the sea level, and while rising sea levels will, will not impact our territory, we face also several environmental challenges. Temperature, rainfall, and humidity patterns across the Valley of Mexico uh, have shifted over the past four decades, creating both increased drought and flood conditions. Our geography makes up a uh, very complex scenery, particularly vulnerable to an urban heat environment. As a result, our advantage are, is that we have uh, money to invest in environmental policy, but the temperature have increased by 2 or 3% centigrade since the 70s, and by 4% centigrade since the early 20th, 20th century. So uh, we were 4 degrees, uh, now we are 4 degrees more hot than 100 years ago. In the world's largest cities, the burden and cost of climate change is expected to fall heaviest on the urban poor. These populations tend to locate in the most vulnerable locations, where housing, construction, standards, and public infrastructure are inadequate. Moreover, the urban poor are the least prepared to address climate change and, of course, also to adapt to it. When a climate crisis strikes, Cities are the first responders. Mayors are the ones that citizens look for uh, a response and uh, also for solutions. Because of uh, the proximity of the mayors to the citizens and because the cities provide bas basic services that directly impact people's everyday lives, we must be ready to respond. In Mexico City, when heavy rainfall causes seasonal flooding, or landslides, no one calls the president of Mexico or the United Nations. Instead, it is the Mexico City government, the mayor, that puts its boots on the ground, wet, moody ones at that, and responds uh, to the citizens' needs. For these reasons, cities are critical actors in arriving at a global commitment to address climate change. National governments may set the rules 
but cities are the units of government that will implement them. This message of Mr. Schwarzenegger is one example of that. He runs a subnational government with success. To date, mayors and other urban leaders have not been an equal partner with national governments at the climate negotiation table. But this is beginning to change in two ways. First, because cities look uh, at issues such as climate change from a more pragmatic way than a national government. We are acting on our own. Hundreds of cities around the world, Mexico City included, have developed and are implementing our own climate action plans customized to respond to local threats and utilizing local resources. There are hundreds of ways that cities are acting. We are reducing GAG emissions resulting from public transportation systems, legislating new green buildings standards, creating more public green spaces and green develop development uh, corridors, introducing renewable energy system in public buildings and spaces, investing in new public transport transportation and sustainable ways of, of mobility, water and solid waste infrastructure, purchase, purchasing electric, hybrid and biofuels vehicles for use in city fleets, creating bicycle sharing networks in a high de density urban uh, centers, expanding recycling programs, investing in waste to energy technologies, and planting trees and cleaning up uh, polluted rivers. I can open this. <laughs> Second, cities are working together around the world. They are getting very interesting agreements. They are organizing a new way of international diplomacy to share the best practices and put in place global instruments and resources to monitor, report, and verify what we are doing to address climate change in our cities. In December 2009, more than 500 mayors from around the world attended UN climate talks in Copenhagen. While national governments couldn't reach an agreement, mayors presented a number of different initiatives including the city climate uh, catalog, which included more than 3,000 targets reported by almost 30, uh, uh, 3,000 uh, cities around the world. Still, many mayors left this meeting disappointed with our ability to participate in uh, or to impact our global negotiations. At Copenhagen, uh, Mexico City's mayor, Mr. Marcelo Ebrard, was appointed as the chairman of the World Mayors Council on Climate Change. In this new capacity, Mayor Ebrard and Mexico City decided to enhance the ability of cities to collaborate on climate. As Arnold Schwarzenegger said, uh, cities act. They are not waiting for the others' initiatives. Then, to achieve this, we need to create a new mechanism to bring cities together. To this end, one year ago today, exactly on November 21st of 2010, mayors for 135 cities around the world met in Mexico City at the World's Mayors Summit on Climate. The summit was convened by Mexico City in partnership with the World Mayors Council on Climate Change, with ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability, the UCLG, United Cities and Local Governments, and the Club de Madrid. The summit created two groundbreaking initiatives. The signing of the Global Cities Covenant on Climate, also known as the Mexico City Pact, and the launch of the Carbon Cities Climate Registry. Together, these two processes have created a political and technical tool to measure, report, and verify JG emissions inventories, energy and climate commitments, and mitigation and action plan of local governments worldwide. Two weeks after the Mexico City Summit, 
these initiatives were formally presented at the United Nations Framework uh, Convention for Climate Exchange in Cancun in 2011. And over the past year, more cities have signed the Mexico City Pact. Today, there are 205 signatories of 47 countries. Together, these cities are home to a combined 250 million citizens around the world. A diverse set of cities have signed the pact, from megacities such as Mexico City, Sao Paulo, Los Angeles, Paris, Istanbul, Johannesburg, and Jakarta, to meet medium-sized and smaller communities in both developed and developing countries. I'm pleased to announce that Oslo has recently joined these cities, and I want to thank the commitment and the confidence of Mr. Stian Berger, Rosland, governing mayor of Oslo. Elsewhere in Europe, the signatures include uh, 11 cities in France, three cities in Spain, three in Portugal, two in Sweden, and one in each in Denmark, in Belgium, Italy, and Croatia. The Mexico City Pact was not only signed by megacities. Any local government with a sensible view in the climate scenario is suitable to sign in. That is why many signing rural local governments report have created or extended natural protected protected areas, and 15 cities have applied integral basin and river sustainable management programs. Among all the diverse policies reported in this first uh, uh, inform that we are launching today, the most common concern in all local governments is the adequate management of solid wastes. 50 out of 51 cities reported multiple programs of adequate waste management, including separation and recycling, education and creation of proper landfills or separation uh, uh, for, to generate electricity, even to generate the, regu the regulation for reduction of packages uh, at the local level. Furthermore, 26 uh, cities developed biogas projects in landfills to use it uh, as fuel, developed carbon market schemes, or just to avoid the methane generated. Megacities are experiencing the effects of climate change nowadays, but also they are one of the main contribu contributors to the GHG emissions. Increasing density is the best solution to make more sustainable cities. But as they grew up, they need better transport connections, as well as urban planning and green areas. In this matter, 23 uh, cities included in the Mexico City Pact have reported the extension of sustainable existing public transportation networks, for example, the BRT corridors or trains, subways, uh, even uh, at the same time, 41 cities report urban reforest reforestation activities, including the promotion or the installation of green roofs, new parks, restoration of rivers. Finally, seven cities reported sustainable vehicle programs that include the substitution of old vehicles and contaminating uh, automobiles and the insertion of electric and hybrid cars. Adaptation to climate change is also a crucial agenda uh, at the local level. As they need to decrease their dependency in prevention, they also need effective response to natural hazards and financial aid to climate change impact for the federal governments. In this sense, 27 cities have developed long-term adaptation strategies, legislation and policies. 19 of them have created strict construction regulations foreseeing mid- and long-term probable impacts of hazards, most of all to poor, vulnerable people. Seven cities have considered the protection and preservation of biodiversity as an imperative necessity. This is a good start, but we need many more cities around the world to join these efforts. Meanwhile, those cities which have signed the pact 
are today very busy implementing his reporting mechanism, registering their climate action plans and GAG emissions reductions, and uh, also they are reaching very ambitious energy efficiency targets. Over the past year, 51 cities, diverse in geography, economies, size, and structure, have voluntarily submitted a range of data to the Carbon Cities Climate Registry. The experience through the Carbon uh, Cities Climate Registry further proves that the cities cannot advance their climate action if they do not report. And that this is a name that even the nations uh, around the world wants to do. The UNFCCC is aiming the nations to report and, and to be uh, to have a MRB registry, but cities are uh, again ahead of them and they are doing that today. These efforts are helping cities around the world achieve transparency and accountability of their local climate actions. The information is available to, to the cities uh, everywhere, also uh, every citizen can access to this information that we have generated. And uh, the citizens, inhabitants of the cities that are participating in this process, uh, they can see what their leaders and their communities are doing, and they can compare these actions with other cities. The Mexico City Pact cities are demonstrating leadership. And uh, it's frequently the, the question that what we need to advance negotiations on climate. Do we need money? Do we need citizen awareness? I think that we do need leadership. And this is what this conference is about. And it's very, very exciting to hear all the, the, the panelists talk with this uh, commitment and leadership. Uh, at the same time, national governments and the global climate community are gaining a better understanding of uh, the achievements and performance of the cities around the world. Um, this can help them to develop appropriate global climate policies, one that take into consideration both involvement of local governments and the resources needed for cities to help meet the future GHG reductions targets and timetables. At COP17 in Durban, South Africa, and leading up uh, uh, during next year, UN Conference of Sustainable Development, marking the 20th anniversary of the Rio summit, we cities will continue to mobilize ourselves across the planet to climate action. Finally, let me talk a minute about what Mexico City is doing. Mexico City was known as the most polluted and chaotic city in the world. Maybe you're still uh, having this image of this mega city. But we have implemented a green plan of 15 years and a uh, uh, plan that also is committed to reduce our emissions very significantly, encourage citizens and business to adopt climate-friendly behavior, and also aiming to repair the damage uh, of past environmental neglect. Our results are significant. In July, on the fourth anniversary of the launch of the Climate Action Plan, we announced that uh, our reduction of GAG emissions was 5.7 million metric tons, and we gained that in the, the last four years. This is 80% of the target set for the first five years of the plan, a target we now expect to meet uh, on the schedule in 2012. Looking ahead, I'm confident that the Mexico City Pact and the Carbon Cities Climate Registry will make a significant contribution to the global climate dialogue and to our collective momentum toward uh, a new climate agreement. And this agreement doesn't have to be just uh, among nations. It can be also among cities, but best among private sector, academics, and, so, and uh, citizens. We are also demonstrating accountability to the citizens uh, of the planet. One of out 
buried two of which today call a city their home. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to present these efforts toward a zero emission planet. I congratulate Mr. Inar Handlinken, Executive Director of Zero, for this extraordinary initiative of the conference. The challenge we face in balancing economy development with promoting green economies and societies are very complex and difficult. But events such as this help us explore solutions, identify partners, and inspire, inspire us to adopt climate actions in our daily lives. I also want to highlight the leadership of Mr. Peter Stunderlen and Gunhild Stunderlen. They are role models of, of role models of leadership for other for other leaders in the country. I really admire their commitment and their punch to uh, uh, advance this environmental and climate agenda. Thank you for your attention.